Can you answer this quiz question? Which ports in this topology are blocking? We've got switch one, switch two, and switch three. The switches have these priorities. These are the MAC addresses of the switches. I've pre-configured these switches in GNS3, and I'll show you the answers in a moment, but can you work this out? Notice the port numbers, notice the priorities, notice the MAC addresses. Which ports are blocking in this topology? What do you think? Pause the video now if you wanna work it out, otherwise I'm gonna now show you the answer. Okay, so the first decision in a spanning tree topology like this is to determine the root switch. Which switch is the root switch? That's based on the bridge ID, which consists of the bridge priority and the bridge MAC address. Priority takes precedence. So we look at the priorities and we only use the MAC addresses as a tiebreaker. Lowest number wins. This is a tip to remember. Generally, and there's always exceptions, but generally, on switches, the lowest number wins, and on routers, the highest number wins. So as an example, with HSRP, the highest priority wins, but on spanning tree, on switches, the lowest priority wins. So again, a tip to remember, on routers, generally highest number wins, on switches, generally lowest number wins. Okay, so I would say that the switch is the root switch. So switch one is gonna be the root because it has the lowest priority in this topology. Again, I'm running this topology in GNS3. So I'll show you the answer in a moment, but for now, let's work it out. That is the root switch of the topology. The next decision is every switch that is not the root switch needs to choose its root port. That's the best port to use to get to the root switch based on a path cost. These are gigabit links. Path cost by default here is four. From switch two's point of view, it has two paths to get to switch one of equal cost. So we can't use path cost as the determining factor. Next decision is look at the neighbor bridge ID lowest number wins. In this case, we can't use that as a determining factor because both those ports are connected to switch one. So we can't use neighbor bridge ID. Next decision is based on priority, port priority. That's based on the side. So when the BPDUs or bridge protocol data units are forwarded to switch two, the priority and port number allows us to determine which port is gonna be the root port. So I'm gonna start a Wireshark capture on that port. Here's the output of that capture. Notice we have a spanning tree message being sent into the network. It's automatically converted the name of the switch based on the vendor code. I just use some random numbers here. I could have used Cisco as an example rather than 0020 but notice inside the message we have spanning tree. Root identifier is this, 4096. Path cost is zero to the root. Notice the one, that is the system ID extension. In other words, this is a BPDU for VLAN one. So root bridge priority, root bridge system ID, and the MAC address of the root Cost is zero to get to the root. Notice the bridge information is exactly the same because this is the root switch. Notice the port identifier. Notice that number for port. Let's do a capture on the other link. So here's gigabit one zero to gigabit zero one. And here's gigabit zero three to gigabit zero zero. And if we look in the message, we can see the port identifier over here. Notice this number is smaller than this number. So in the BPDU, we actually see the port information advertised to the other switch. So this switch knows that the BPDU is coming from gigabit 03 
have a lower port number than the BPDUs coming from Gigabit 1.0. So again, just to make the point, Gigabit 1.0 port identifier is this. Gigabit 03 port identifier is this. And if we look at the console of that switch, show spanning tree, we can see the port numbers. Notice gigabit 1.0, priority is 128, port number is 5. Gigabit 0.3, priority is 128, port number is 4. So in the Wireshark capture, notice this is gigabit 1.0, Gigabit 1.0 has a port number of 5. Notice we can see it over here, port number of 5. And Gigabit 0.3 has a port number of 8004. Notice Gigabit 0.3, there we can see the port number. Now what I'll do just to make a point here is I'll change the priority of let's say Gigabit 0.3. So I'll say spanning tree port priority 64. And let's see what the BPDUs look like. So this is on gigabit 03. Here's the Wireshark capture. I'll scroll down right to the end. So here are the latest BPDUs. Notice the port identifier has been reduced. So the combination of the priority and port number have reduced this value. I'll set it back to the default of 128. Scroll all the way down and notice it's changed again, 8004, whereas previously it was 4004. So again, 4004, now it's back to 8004. So at the moment, the priorities are set to the default, 128 on all the ports. So based on that information, this port is going to be the root port because this interface has a lower port number. Priorities are the same, port number is lower. We can see that once again on switch one. Show spanning tree. This interface has a lower port number than this interface. So that'll be the root port. And to prove that, let's have a look at the console. So show spanning tree. Notice the root port is gigabit 00, which is correct per our calculations. This is the root port. Okay, so what about this side? Assume that the priorities are the same, 128 on both these ports. Which port is gonna be the root port on switch three? So again, looking at path cost, Path costs are the same to get to the root bridge. If we have a look at the neighbor bridge ID, it's the same on both these ports, so we can't use neighbor bridge ID as the determining factor. If we look at priorities, they are the same. We can see that again on switch two, notice the priorities are the same. Then we need to base the decision on port number. This port number is lower than this port number. I'll stop these Wireshark captures and I'll prove it again by doing a Wireshark capture on gigabit 02 and, and gigabit 03. So on gigabit 02, if we have a look at the spanning tree protocol, Notice root identifier is this, that's switch one. The local switch is this, 32768 is a priority, this is the MAC address, that's this switch. If we have a look at the port identifier, notice it's 0x8003, that's gigabit 02. Notice interface number here, priority is 128. If we look at Gigabit 03. There's the bridge ID, there's the route, there's the port identifier 8004. So this port has an identifier of 4, which we can see over here. Notice port identifier is 4. 
So lowest port number will win. I would say that this will be the root port in the topology on switch three. So let's have a look at switch three and confirm that. So here's switch three. Show spanning tree. Notice root port is gigabit zero one, not gigabit zero zero. So this is the root port in the topology. Now once we've got root ports, we need to determine designated ports. So again, in spanning tree, with per VLAN spanning tree, there's one root per VLAN for the entire layer two topology. Once we've chosen the root switch, we need to choose root ports. Any switch that's not the root switch has a root port, which is its best port to use to get to the root bridge or root switch. We've chosen that now. So now on a per segment basis, we need to choose designated ports. Now you can't get closer to the root switch than the root switch itself. So all interfaces connected to the root switch are immediately set to designated ports. On this link here, what's the quickest way to the root switch? Is it to go round here or is it simply to go left? I would say it's quicker to go left. So that's a fairly easy decision for both of these ports. It's gonna be quicker to go left than it is to go right if you are on this segment or if you are on this segment. So those are designated ports. All other ports are now blocked. So this becomes a blocking port. I'll change the color of this text to red to indicate blocking. So that is a blocking port and this is a blocking port. So there you go, we've worked it out. Let's confirm that we've done it right. On switch two, show spanning tree. Notice gigabit zero one is blocking. It's an alternate port. So we've worked that out correctly. Notice gigabit zero two and zero three are designated ports. Root port is gigabit zero zero. And then on switch three, show spanning tree, we can see that gigabit zero zero is blocking per our calculations. Zero one is the root port. Now in GNS3, the switches see other interfaces are up. They are actually down, but because this is a virtual environment, they are shown as up. That may change in later versions of GNS3, but you can basically ignore all these other interfaces because they're not connected in this topology. So there you go, how did you do? Did you find this useful? If you did, please like this video. And please, if you don't mind, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That really does help me. I'm David Bombal. I want to wish you all the very best.